Amigos, one of the things that I look forward in every single movie is to watch the intro and ending credit sequence. I think one of my favorite ones must be the one when I first saw Snatch. That just blew my mind. You know, I've been blessed with the opportunity to work on several title sequences for TV shows and documentaries, but my favorite one has to be the one for ESPN's 30 for 30. In this upcoming tutorial, amigos, I'll be sharing with you on how to create your very own Hollywood-style credit sequence. It's gonna be amazing. You won't want to miss it. Amigos, we'll be creating this amazing title sequence. We'll be concentrating mainly on laying it out and creating the camera because if you can master the camera moves in After Effects, you'll be unstoppable. Now, each of these titles, title cards, lives in its own comp. It's pretty simple animation. We're not gonna go in depth because I want you guys to become ninjas when it comes to animating the camera in After Effects. So let's get started. Let's create a new composition, 1920 by 1080. This time, let's make it 23.976 frames per second, and you can give it a duration of 20 seconds. Let's create a new solid, and let's add a gradient. Let's go down to generate, gradient ramp. First color, let's give it a dark purple. Second color, black, and let's switch it to radial ramp. The first point, let's put it in the middle, and the second off in the corner. So we have a nice gradient. Let's go back to our project and let's bring in our first two titles. Let's make them 3D layers by activating the 3D switch. And let's, me sh let's show you the first one. Now, amigos, the key to animating and laying this out, building this, is to go step by step. We're going to lay down the foundation and build upon the foundation. Now, a little trick that I use to place these titles in 3D space is to switch my views to four view left. I use either a two view horizontal or four views left. This one, I make it my top view. This one, usually my front view. And this top one will be my active camera. And this one, my custom view number one. Let's put these titles in 3D space. The second one, produced by, hit P for position. We're gonna be adjusting the Z value. So let's put in minus 500 for this one. And already you can see that it's already in 3D space. Using our front view, we can use the handles. And you can see if I zoom in, you can see if you hover around, you have the X. If you just hover on the red, it's only moving it in the X. If you hover on the green, you see like a little Y it'll only move it in the Y. So that's what we want to do. That's a key. The next one, let's make a copy of produced and let's swap it with the third one, which is written. And let's adjust the Z value. Let's make it about minus 1400. And then once again, in your front view, we can go to the front view and we can move it Let's make another copy. Let's swap it out with edited. Let's put it about minus 4,000 pixels. And let's move it over. Let's move it down. And we go here, we can see exactly how it looks. Let's zoom out. So this is what we have so far. One, two, three, and four. Let's make one last copy and let's swap it with cinematography. And this one, let's just push it back about 7,000 pixels. And this is what we have. Let's create a camera. Let's make it 28 millimeter. Hit OK. And let's create a null object. Let's call this camera control. Make it a 3D layer. And let's parent the camera to the null object. Let's switch this back to active camera, one view, and let's go to the next step, step number two. And step number two, amigos, is we're gonna add markers because the markers is gonna help us when we're lining up our keyframes and the layers. Now we need to know how long are we gonna stay on each title card and how long are we gonna move the camera. For this example, let's stay on each title card for a second and a half 
and let's move the camera. Let's do the camera move anywhere from half a second to a second long. So let's add our markers and you can add the marker by on your numpad on your keyboard by pressing on the asterisk. So let's put our first marker at 000. And remember, a second and a half will be on the first title. So we're going to go to 112 because we're working in 23.976. So let's add a marker. And then from here, we're going to, the camera is going to move for half a second or 12 frames. Then we're in the second here. We're going to be in the second on the second title. We're going to put two. So you guys know we're on the second. And we're going to stay for a second and a half, put a marker, and then we're going to move the camera for 12 frames, put a marker, and this one we're going to be on the third title. And we're going to stay for a second and a half, and then we're going to move the camera. And this is a big jump, so let's make it a second long instead. And then we're going to be on the fourth title. We're going to stay for a second and a half on the fourth title, and then we're going to move the camera for half a second. We'll be on the last one, on the fifth one. And we're going to stay there for a second and a half. And then finally, we'll fade it out. And this is the end. Now, if this doesn't make sense, amigos, it will in a minute once we start animating the null object. Because remember, the camera is parented to the null object. So let's put our first keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch. And let's go to the second marker, add another keyframe, go to two seconds, and let's move the X, Y, and Z. So adjust these properties to line up the second title. Let's go to 312, add a keyframe, and then let's go to the third title. And again, we're going to line up the third title by adjusting the X, Y, and Z. Let's put a keyframe. Let's go to the fourth one. And again, we're going to adjust the values. Let's add a keyframe. Let's go to five, the fifth title. Let's add a keyframe here. And finally, let's just pull out. Select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe interpolation. And here where you see temporal and spatial interpolation, we're going to make sure that it's both set to linear. And let's do a ramp preview so you guys can see what's going on right now. It looks pretty simple. It looks robotic. It looks ugly, but that's OK. We're going to build upon this step. So let's go to the next step. Let's create a little bit of movement for each title card. As we scrub through, there's no camera move when we're in each title. The camera moves only when we move the camera. So let's dolly out on each title card. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the Z value. So let's go to the end. Let's go to this keyframe right here. And let's dolly. Let's move back a little bit in Z space. Boom. So we have it. It's moving backwards. Perfect. Goes to the second one. And then on this keyframe, Let's dolly a little bit back. Perfect. We're in the third one. And let's select this keyframe. Let's dolly back. Nice. Let's go to the fourth one. Select this keyframe. Let's dolly back. Let's go to the fifth one. And on this keyframe, let's dolly back. So let's take a look. It's looking a little bit better, yes. There's a little bit more motion. It doesn't stay static. And we can always select the keyframes, right click, and you guess it, keyframe assistant. We're going to put easy ease to smooth out the motion. It's looking better. And we can take it one step further, amigos. Let's select your null object, and we're going to create two expression controls. And they're going to be both slider control and the first one, let's call it frequency. Let's make another one. And the second one, let's call it amount. 
We're gonna add a simple expression called wiggle and what wiggle does, it actually shakes, it moves. So we want the camera to move. Let's all click on the stopwatch and let's type in wiggle, put the bracket and then using this little icon, the pick whip, we're gonna pick whip and drag it to the slider for the frequency. Type in comma and we're gonna pick whip to the slider for the amount. Put another bracket and click outside the box. Now wiggle, like I said, it, it's like a shake. It shakes the camera. Whatever object, whatever layer you're adding to it, it'll shake it. And it takes two parameters, frequency and amount. Frequency is, the first parameter is how many times you want it to move or shake per second. And the second parameter is how many pixels do you want it to offset or move? So if we set it to, for example, we set it to 10 and we play back, you might ask, hey CM, it's not working, but it is. And it's working because we're not moving any pixels. Now, if we set it to, let's say 20 pixels, this is what happens. It's a little bit drastic, a little bit extreme, but let's dial it down. Let's put one and let's see what happens. Not bad. So you can see it's more of a subtle move and that's what we want. We want it to kind of float. The idea is to make it float in space. Actually, that looks pretty cool. So let's move on to the next step. And the very next step is let's, let's line up each of our titles and we're gonna use the markers to help us place the titles in the right spot. So for the first one, it's perfect. We don't have to do anything. Let's go to the second one and let's line it up. And actually, we're gonna go backwards four frames, one, two, three, four, so we can see a little bit of the motion. But the first one, as we go from the first one to the second one, we want the first one to fade out. So using our markers as guides, Let's fade it out, hit T for opacity, and we're gonna fade it out. And let's cut the layer at this point. So this is what we have. Nice, perfect. And we're gonna repeat this for the rest of the titles. So for here, we're gonna fade out the second title. And one, two, three. I'm gonna put the third title once again. Here, we're gonna fade it out. Let's bring in the fourth one. Let's fade it out. And you can see, amigos, the power of using markers. I use markers all the time, it's so helpful. You don't have to look at the time code. You know exactly where to put your keyframes and exactly when to cut your layers. I use it all the time, it's very, very helpful. And then finally this one, let's fade it out, the last one. Let's go back, let's do a RAM preview so you can see exactly what's going on. Nice. We can tweak it a little bit more. This looks good. Nice. This one can come in a little bit sooner, the fourth one. So we can go back and we can make it come sooner a little bit. Obviously, we'll have to tweak the keyframes. Now, amigos, this is looking good. We can go one step further and that's to give it that Hollywood gloss, Hollywood flair to this intro sequence. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add optical flares to give it the Hollywood look. So let's go to layer, new solid, and let's call it OF for optical flares. Let's go to effect, video copilot, optical flares. Go to options and let's select, let's go back and let's select this one. Hit okay. Let's change the blending mode to screen and let's scrub through. This is what happens, pretty boring. We can go to 3D which looks pretty cool, but it's everywhere. But there's a better option, and the better option is the third one, which is track lights. What track lights does is it uses your lights as a source of the flare. So if we create a new light, let's make it a point light, and let's call it A for now. And if we go scrub, you can see that our light is affecting our layers. We need to adjust the material options for our layers, so let's select our layers. 
our titles and hit AA where it says accept lights. We're going to turn it off and might as well turn off accept shadows too. Let's go back. Okay, now the layers are independent of the light. Where we're gonna go, go back to your flare. Let's put track lights. And where it says name starts with anything, we're gonna we want it to start with A. So what that says is that we want our light that starts with the letter A to be the one that has a flare. So right now, the beauty of this thing is we can animate the, the position of the flare because the flare is where the point light is. So this is the beauty of using track lights. Actually, I messed it up. Let's go back. Let's go all the way here. The beauty of using track lights is we can animate the position of the light pretty easy. And that's what we're going to do. And using our markers, we're going to have some fun and animate the position of this flare. Just have some fun, amigos. That's the key. Have some fun. There's no right or wrong answer for this. And then finally, the last one, let's just pull out all the way back so it disappears. Select all the keyframes. Once again, right click, keyframe interpolation. Make sure it's set to linear on both. Hit OK. And let's go to keyframe assistant and easy ease. And let's take a look. <laughs> nice. And that's how you create a Hollywood intro or outro title sequence ending credits. Thank you for watching, amigos. Always stay creative, let it flow like agua from Managua. If you like this tutorial, please like it, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends.